Hey everyone, it's Dr. Ida Khan. Welcome back to my channel, Medico's Guide. Today we'll explore about Gulen Bari syndrome or the GBS, a rare autoimmune disorder in detail, covering its causes, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, and more. So the objectives of this video are to talk about overview, other names, which scientists it was named after, definition, background, historical background, pathophysiology, epidemiology, and much more. Gullion Barry syndrome GBS is a rare autoimmune disorder where the immune system mistakenly attacks peripheral nervous system, leading to muscle weakness and paralysis. It usually starts with weakness and tingling sensation in the legs, which can spread to the arms and upper body, potentially causing life-threatening complications such as respiratory failure. GBS is also known as Landry's ascending paralysis or acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, that is AIDP. It was named after George Gillian and Jean Alexander Barry, the French neurologist who first described it in 1916. GBS can have a significant impact on a person's life. GBS is characterized by inflammation and damage to the myelin sheath of peripheral nerves, disrupting the nerve signal transmission and leading to muscle weakness and paralysis. GBS can be triggered by infections such as Compylobacter trigeminae. Cytomegalovirus, Zika virus, vaccinations like flu shot or COVID-19 vaccine. However, the exact cause is not fully understood. GB GBS gained attention during World War I when soldiers developed paralysis after flu-like illness, leading to its initial description. Now let's talk about pathophysiology. The immune system's attack on peripheral nerves myelin sheath results in nerve inflammation and dysfunction disrupting the transmission of nerve signals. Now let's see the epidemiology of the GBS. GBS is rare. It affects about 1-2 to two individuals per 100,000 annually. It can occur in people of any age, gender or ethnicity. Mortality and Morbidity Mortality rate is around 4-7% to 7 and the main cause of death is because of the respiratory failure and the long-term disability occurs in about 20-30% to of the cases. Early diagnosis, prompt treatment, and younger age are associated with better outcomes in GBS. Now let's talk about the following points. GBS relapse is rare but can occur in about 3-5% to of the cases. GBS typically begins with weakness or tingling sensation in the legs and then it spreads to the arms and upper body. GBS is sporadic and doesn't follow any seasonal or ge geographic patterns. The acute phase of GBS usually lasts for a few weeks to several months. Now, let's take a look at symptoms. GBS typically begins with weakness and tingling sensations in the leg, which can spread to the arms and the upper body, and this progression may occur rapidly and can lead to life-threatening complications such as respiratory failure. It can also result in difficulty moving eyes, facial weakness, and paralysis. There are several types of GBS, including acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy (AIDP), Miller-Fisher syndrome (MFS), acute motor axonal neuropathy (AMAN), and acute motor and sensory axonal neuropathy (AMSCN). Each type has its own unique clinical features and underlying pathophysiology. So now let's discuss each type one by one. First of all, we have Acute Inflammatory Demyelinating Polyneuropathy AIDP, and this is the most common type of GBS. It is characterized by demyelination of peripheral nerves, leading to muscle weakness and sensory disturbances. Now our next type is Miller-Fisher Syndrome, that is MFS. MFS is a variant of GBS and it is characterized by triad of the symptoms. The first one is ataxia, that is loss of coordination. Then we have areflexia, loss of reflexes and ophthalmoplegia that is paralysis of eye muscles. It is often associated with anti-GQ1B antibodies. Now AMAN that is acute motor axonal neuropathy. So AMAN is characterized by pure motor involvement without sensory deficits. It is associated with the preceding infection particularly compylobacter jejuni and is more common in the regions where this infection is prevalent. Now, our last type is AMSAN, that is Acute Motor and Sensory Axonal Neuropathy. And this type is similar to AMAN. 
AMSAN primarily affects motor nerves but also involves sensory nerves. It is associated with more severe and prolonged paralysis compared to the other forms of GBS. The exact cause of GBS is not fully understood, but it is often triggered by infections such as Compylobacter jejuni, Cytomegalovirus, or Zika virus, and the vaccinations, particularly the flu shot and COVID-19 vaccine, have also been associated with GBS, although the risk is extremely low. Now let's talk about the risk factors. So the risk factors for GBS include recent infections, particularly gastrointestinal or respiratory infections. Recent vaccinations including influenza and COVID-19 vaccines and certain medical conditions such as autoimmune disorders or cancers. Now, diagnosis. Diagnosis of GBS involves a thorough clinical evaluation, neurological examination and supportive tests such as nerve conduction studies and lumbar puncture, electromyography, cerebrospinal fluid analysis and sometimes nerve biopsy. These tests help confirm the presence of nerve damage and rule out other possible causes of symptoms. Treatment focuses on reducing inflammation and managing symptoms. Options include intravenous immunoglobulin, plasma exchange that is plasmapheresis, pain management, respiratory support and rehabilitation. Rehabilitation plays a crucial role in improving muscle strength, mobility and overall function, aiding in recovery and preventing long-term disability. Now patient education. Patients should be educated about the symptoms of GBS, the importance of seeking prompt medical attention, the potential for respiratory complications, the expected course of the disease, and the availability of supportive treatments and rehabilitation services. Now let's take a look at the outlook of GBS. The prognosis of the GBS varies depending on the factors such as age, severity of symptoms, rapidity of onset, and the presence of complications. Most patients experience partial or complete recovery within months to years, although some may have residual deficits or long-term disability. Early diagnosis and treatment are associated with better outcomes. Now let's talk about latest updates. Ongoing research on GBS focuses on better understanding its pathophysiology, identifying novel biomarkers for diagnosis and prognosis, exploring new treatment options and improving supportive care and rehabilitation services. Now let's see what are the complications of GBS. So complications of GBS can include respiratory failure requiring mechanical ventilation, autonomic dysfunction leading to blood pressure fluctuations or abnormal heart rhythms, DVT that is deep venous thrombosis, pressure sores and psychological issues such as anxiety or depression. Early recognition and management of complications are essential to minimize their impact on patients' outcomes. Prevention Although there is no specific way to prevent GBS, avoiding known triggers such as certain infections or vaccinations may reduce the risk. However, the benefits of vaccination in preventing serious infectious diseases generally outweigh the extremely low risk of GBS. Recovery from GBS varies among individuals and may take weeks to years. While most patients experience partial or complete recovery, some may have residual deficits or long-term disability. Rehabilitation including physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy plays a crucial role in maximizing recovery and restoring function. Now, what to expect? Patients can expect a variable course of recovery, with some experiencing rapid improvement while others may have a slower recovery trajectory. It is important to remain patient and committed to the rehabilitation process as progress may be gradual and unpredictable. Open communication with healthcare providers and adherence to treatment recommendations can help optimize outcomes and facilitate a successful recovery. Now what are the take-home points? First, DBS is a rare autoimmune disorder characterized by muscle weakness and paralysis due to peripheral nerve damage. It can be triggered by infections or vaccinations, although the exact cause is not fully understood. GBS typically starts with weakness and tingling sensations in the legs and may progress to affect the arms and upper body. There are several subtypes of GBS including AIDP, MFS, AMAN, and AMSCN, each with distinct clinical features. Diagnosis is based on clinical evaluation, neurological examination, and supportive tests such as nerve conduction studies, and lumbar puncture. 
Treatment involves reducing inflammation with IVIG that is intravenous immunoglobulin or plasma exchange, supportive care and rehabilitation to improve function. Prognosis varies but is generally favorable with most patients experiencing partial or complete recovery over time. Complications such as respiratory failure and long-term disability may occur, emphasizing the importance of early recognition and management. Prevention strategies focus on avoiding known triggers and optimizing vaccination practices. Patient education and support are essential for managing the physical and emotional aspects of GBS and facilitating recovery. Now we have tables that provide the whole summary of the GBS. These slides have been provided for your assistance in memorizing the whole information present in this video. In summary, golan barre syndrome is a rare but serious autoimmune disorder that can have a significant impact on a person's life. Early recognition, diagnosis, and treatment are essential for optimizing outcomes and facilitating recovery. Thank you for watching our educational video on golan barre syndrome. Be sure to consult with a healthcare professional for personalized medical advice and treatment. Until next time, take care.